Welcome to Schematic Updating as we continue to learn about Altium Designer. I had an interesting request once as a consultant from a customer. They wanted all of the 10k resistors in their schematics to be changed to another value for sourcing reasons, possibly. They never did tell me why. This was easy enough to do in Altium using a global selection and editing technique. To illustrate this powerful and simple feature, we will change the value of a capacitor throughout our design. To begin, simply click on the 100 nanofarad capacitor. Now that it, we have it selected, right click and in the pop up menu select Find Similar Object. This opens up the Find Similar Object window with a listing showing the selected parts specific objects and parameters, all of which can be used for global or local searching in our selection operation. In this case, selecting the Part Comments pull down menu and we change it to Same allows us to search for any parts with the exact same comment. We could just as easily narrow down the search or selection criteria by adding more constraints using either Same or Different depending on our aim. Leaving the remaining fields to Any basically ignores these for the search. Before we hit OK and start the search, we should explore the Find Similar Object window a bit. This window has a number of options, including the scope of the search. In this case, it is set to Current Design. Clicking on the selection opens up a drop-down menu where we can expand our search to include open documents or project documents, depending on what we're trying to select. In my example, and in this one, we would want the scope to be all of the matching components in this project. So we will select that option. Now that the scope and the selection criteria have been set, we can turn our attention to what we want to do with the global search and selection. Looking at the checkboxes, we can see there are a number of options. For our purpose, we would want to check the Select Matching and Run Inspector boxes. Notice that we could simply zoom into the matching components, or if we're looking to create an expression to use elsewhere, we could select the Create Expression box. This could be useful for example, later on in rule generation if we were working in a PCB. Clicking Apply runs the search and provides some feedback on the results in the form of highlighted components in our current view. Clicking OK closes the Find Similar Object window and opens the Schematic Inspector panel with the selected components highlighted in the schematic view. We see that five components match this search. Now in the Inspector panel, we can edit the Part Comment field to read 101 nanofarad instead of the 100 nanofarad. Hitting Carriage Return updates all of the selected components across the project. We can see that this changed multiple components on multiple schematics, as indicated by the asterisks on three of the schematic sheets. If we wanted to clear this selection, we would hit the Clear button in the bottom right of the window. Looking at each of the schematics, we can see the changes. Hitting Control Z backs out the change. Using Find Similar Object is a powerful way to find, select, and change components globally in the schematics. There are a few more features that aid in the design capture process. The next one is useful with an inherited design, in particular if that design was not captured on grid. To realign the schematic objects, placing them on the currently set grid, first select all of the schematic objects. To select everything on a page, you can use the rectangle selection method or Edit and Select All from the pull-down menus. Now that we have everything selected, we can use Edit, Align, Align to Grid. This will put everything on the current grid setting. In some cases, you may to do some cleanup, but in the long run, it's better having everything aligned both for the look as well as for making connections. Using a large grid setting when performing the initial placement is recommended. Sometimes it's faster to quickly place components and then clean up their placement later. I use Altium's alignment tools to clean up quickly placed components. The alignment tools are located under the Edit, Align submenu, or they can be accessed using the Align icon. The objects must be selected first before performing the alignment operation. Let's move some of the ports so they don't line up and then select them. Now with them selected, we will use the Align icon, opening it up and selecting the Align Right option. This aligns the group to the rightmost selected object. Notice that one of the objects I selected was the rightmost and was in the proper location. I use this oftentimes to make the schematics look orderly once I've finished the initial placement and before wiring. Consider trying a few Align options to get a feel for selecting and aligning objects on your schematics. In some cases, it can be helpful to document or to draw attention to a particular net. 
To highlight a particular net, for example a higher voltage one like 12 volts, we'll use the net color icon and select the color to apply to the net. In this example we will select red and apply the net highlighting to all of the 12 volt nets. Now, all the wires that are connected to 12 volts, we see they have the red highlight. Notice that the 12 volt power connectors are not highlighted as they are not wires. This highlighting can be toggled on and off via the icon, like this. The highlighting can also be removed using the clear net color or clear all net color options. This can be useful to draw attention to particular nets like high voltage or current ones, or to indicate sensitive analog nets. When a design is captured, the component numbering often gets out of order. In that instance, it can be useful to re-annotate the component reference designators. In addition, some companies have standards for the order and numbering of components on schematics. And with Altium, it is possible to reorder the existing components at any point if needed. The annotation tool is located under the Tools main pull-down menu. The initial run at Annotation should start with the Annotate Schematic Selection. This is where the schematic annotation is configured, and once configured, the other options for annotation are able to be used, such as the resetting operations and the Annotate Schematics Quietly operation. Again, these should only be tried after initially setting everything up. The typical process for annotation goes as follows. We would first set the order of processing using the pull-down menu. We will use, in our case, a cross then down. Next, we enable or disable particular sheets for annotation as desired. And if needed, we can lock a particular component's reference designator by clicking the box in the proposed change list. This would prevent any changes to that one particular component. Then we would do a reset all. Next, we would do Update Changes List. Following that, we would hit the Accept Changes to create the ECO, and then we would run the ECO to perform the updates and changes. Once this is complete, we can close the annotation window. Now that the schematics have been re-annotated, we can check and save them. In this module, we have explored global edits using the Find Similar Object method for selection, and then the Schematic Inspector panel to update and change the selected components. We revisited grids at this time with an eye towards aligning objects both to the grid and with each other. In that highlighting, we set up and perform schematic annotations as well.